let us take the next heading which is called as inversion of mechanism now what is the meaning of inversion i'll write here if one link of a kinematic chain is fixed then it is called as a mechanism we have seen that in case of kinematic chain the links they are not fixed but if we are fixing any one link then it is called as a mechanism next the process of fixing different links one at a time to get different mechanisms is called inversion of mechanism now as we can see here if we have a kinematic chain and we are fixing one of the link of the kinematic chain then it is called as mechanism and the process of fixing the links one at a time that is if we are fixing the first link then next time we are fixing the second link then third and fourth link so when we are fixing different links we get different mechanisms and that process of fixing one link at a time to get different mechanisms is called as inversion of mechanism next the types of inversion the first one is it is inversion of four bar chain next inversion of we can say single slider crank chain and then we have inversion of double slider crank chain so here we have three kinds of inversion the first one is called as a four bar chain in which we get different inversions by fixing the different links next is single slider crank chain and double slider crank chain let us start with four bar chain first four bar chain it consists of four turning pairs that is in case of four bar chain the sliding pair is absent only we have turning members no sliding members so i'll give you all the example of four bar chain by drawing the diagram for this now here i have drawn the diagram of a four bar chain example in which we have four links i'll give the number here we have link 1 this is link 2 link 3 and link 4 now as per the definition of inversion i will keep one link as fixed here i'll keep link 1 as fixed so if we are fixing link number 1 and if i am giving rotation to link 2 then link 2 will move it will rotate at the same time it will be rotating link 3 with it and link 3 will rotate link 4 so if we see in this example between 1 and 2 we are having turning between 2 and 3 we are having turning again between 3 and 4 we are having turning pair and between 4 and 1 we are having turning pair so we have four turning pairs therefore this becomes an example of four bar chain and this example is of rail 
or you can say locomotive wheels that is if we want to drive the wheels of locomotive there we are having the four bar chain mechanism where one of the link is fixed and we are giving rotation to the other links the similar example we can get in case of bicycle where we are transferring motion from we can say the pedal to the rear wheel and the distances in between them is fixed and because of the chain the motion is transmitted so this is four bar chain example of we can say locomotive wheel where we are getting four turning pairs next let me give one more example for this that would be called as a beam engine i'll draw the diagram for that this beam engine is also an example of four bar chain beam engine and the other name for beam engine is crank and lever mechanism here we have the diagram of a beam engine now here as well we have four links i'll call this as link number 1 link 2 link 3 and link 4 link 1 i'll give it to the cylinder this is called as the cylinder so cylinder i am fixing here link 1 is fixed as we can see link 2 is called as crank link 3 is called as connecting rod so here in case of beam engine which is also called as crank and lever mechanism we have four links link 1 2 3 and 4 the first link we'll call it as the cylinder second is the crank because we are giving motion to the crank so it is the first rotating member to which the motion is given then we have connecting rod and next link number 4 is called as the lever so out of the four links cylinder has been fixed and then when we are fixing one of the links we are getting an inversion and this inversion is called as the beam engine so as we can see when the crank rotates it would be transferring the motion through the connecting rod by this lever mechanism and then we will get the reciprocating of this piston and here there would be the gases which are inside the cylinder so as we can see when the crank moves down it would be taking connecting rod with it and then the lever would move up similarly if the crank is moving up then in that case what happens when the crank would be moving up then this piston would be moving down so here we can say that with the help of this lever we can transfer the motion of the crank to the piston so this is an example of four bar chain where we are getting four turning pairs as we can see between one and two there is turning so it is first turning pair second and third there is again there would be turning pair between three and four it would be turning and again between four and one it would be turning pair so this was regarding four bar chain now let us go on to the single slider crank chain so the next heading is inversion of single slider crank chain in case of single slider crank chain inversion here we have one sliding pair and we have three turning pair so since we are having one sliding pair it is called as single slider crank chain i'll draw the diagram for this now 
in case of single slider crank chain here we would be having one sliding pair and three turning pair as we can see in this diagram link one it is the fixed link here i'll say that the fixed link is nothing but the cylinder then link two it is the crank link three it is connecting rod and link four it is piston so now when we are fixing one of the link and giving motion to the crank because crank is the member to which the motion is provided now when the crank would be rotating as the direction i've given here it is clockwise so when crank rotates clockwise the motion is transmitted through the connecting rod and piston would be sliding forward next when it is moving clockwise and it is going back then in that case the piston will will move behind so piston will reciprocate that is piston is the slider here and as we can see between link 1 and link 2 there would be turning between 2 and 3 there would be turning between 3 and 4 here also it would be turning but between 1 and 4 it would be sliding so we are getting three turning pair and one sliding pair so this becomes an example of single slider crank chain where we have we can say the piston as the slider so this was regarding a single slider crank chain next let us see what is double slider crank chain after single slider crank chain we are moving on to double slider crank chain in case of double slider crank chain here i have the mechanism the first one it is called as scotch yoke mechanism in scotch yoke mechanism i'll first draw the diagram because it is a double slider crank chain so here we would be having two slider now in case of scotch yoke mechanism here we would be having two sliding pairs because it is double slider so we have two sliding pairs and two turning pairs now if we see in this diagram here we have link one which we are fixing it is you can say that it is a cylinder then link two is the crank to which the motion would be provided link 3 is the first slider slider 1 and link 4 is the second slider so how this mechanism works that when we are fixing the link 1 and giving motion to link 2 because crank would be rotating so when this crank rotates the slider 1 it slides inside this cylinder and when it is sliding it would be pushing this piston so here when we are having such a mechanism and when the crank rotates the slider slides pushing this piston or towards the right so here we are getting the sliding of the second piston so in this case it is very much understood that by the rotation of the crank when one of the slider it slides it is pushing the cylinder it is pushing the piston here into the second cylinder which we have here so here in this case it is evident that we have two sliding motion and then there is turning so link one and link two they form one turning pair next link two and three they form the second turning pair after this we have link three and here link four they are forming one sliding pair and link 4 and link 1 they are forming the second sliding pair so we have two sliding pairs and two turning pairs so this is an example of double slider or you can say double slider crank chain 
this is the scotch yoke mechanism next another example of double slider crank chain is an elliptical trammel i'll draw the diagram for that so we have another example of double slider crank chain another another example is an elliptical trammel which is used to draw ellipse now in case of elliptical trammel here also it is double slider crank mechanism in which we have two sliding pair and we have two turning pair as we can see in this diagram when we say that link 2 it is the crank because motion would be provided to link 2 now here we are fixing link number 4 previously in case of scotch yoke mechanism for double slider crank chain we had fixed link 1 now if link number 4 is fixed and link 1 is the first slider link 3 is the second slider link 2 is the connecting rod so when we are giving rotation to link number 2 in that case the motion which we are giving to the link 2 because of that the path is generated and the sliding motion of both the sliders it would be constantly changing and we are getting the motion as an ellipse so here elliptical trammel is used to trace an ellipse and we can see that the two of the pair they are sliding and two are turning pair so this is an example of double slider crank chain i hope you all have understood this